And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I am your host, Kenneth Grunfelder, and it's great to have everybody here on this Tuesday, December 26th. We have a lot to talk about on the show today, but before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure to go to the following link, that is streamelements.com slash slash tip. Again, that really helps the show, makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is streamelements.com slash slash tip. And as always, this is displayed on the ticker on the sec- on the bottom of the show segment down below. So with that, let's get right into what we are going to talk about for today. So we're going to start off the show by talking about last night's game between the Ravens and the 49ers. Ravens winning 33-19, to so we'll get into that. Um, we'll talk about the Chiefs game from yesterday as well. Uh, Chiefs losing to the Raiders in that, so we'll get into that uh, in the second part of the show. In the third part of the show, we'll talk about the Eagles finally winning a game, uh, getting back on track, and um, in a close one, uh, defeating the Giants 33-25, to and then we will talk about the Dolphins-Cowboys game uh, from Sunday as well. Um, I hope everybody had a good Christmas weekend. Um, it was a good weekend to have some time off, spend some time with family and friends um, to recharge the batteries a little bit. Um, so that was uh, so that was good, and I uh, got to watch some football. Um, you know, some implications with fantasy, of course, which I'll bring up briefly. And uh, yeah, I got my typical eight wins in the spread pool uh, this week. So um, yeah. But we'll we'll get into uh, we'll get into the fantasy implications uh, with this game because that's really what it came down to. So um, let's get into that. So this game um, is was the two best teams between the Niners and the Ravens. Uh, that's what it was going in, and um, you know both teams same record in their respective conferences, best record in their respective conferences. Uh, the Ravens have been playing really well. Uh, as of late, the Niners, same thing. Um, you know, I, I mean, ever since they got, you know, Debo Samuel back and Trent Williams back, I mean, they looked like the team that they were in the, you know, first part of the season. Because they had a little bit of a skid, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the Ravens, they, uh, from start to finish, dominated this game. And, um, you know, in the beginning... It, it well, I shouldn't say from start to finish. I mean, from the very beginning, it looked like oh, this isn't good because um, Lamar Jackson, um, you know, gets charged with a uh, intentional grounding penalty, and it was from him scrambling and going back into all the way back into the end zone, and they ended up calling a safety on that. Then the Niners kicked a field goal on their uh, on their drive, um, so the Niners were up five nothing. Then the Ravens answered with a field goal to make it five three. Which I mean, it was a really weird score um, at one point. Um, actually, well, yeah, Brock Purdy threw a pick. The Niners, uh, so the Ravens punted on their first drive. Then the Niners went down the field. Uh, Brock Purdy trying to hit Debo Samuel gets intercepted by Kyle Hamilton, Hamilton and it was set up by uh, you know Purdy connecting with George Kittle for 58 yards. Then the Ravens got a safety. Then the Niners kicked a field goal. So that made it five nothing. And then the Ravens answered with a eight play sixty five yard drive, five minutes of time of possession. Um, Justin Tucker kicking a twenty eight yard field goal. So that made it five three. Then on the next drive, Brock Purdy throws another interception, and that was to Marlon Humphrey. Um, Ravens turned that into a touchdown that made it ten five. Um, Gus Edwards from one yard out. Then Brock Purdy threw another interception, and that one that time, again, was to Kyle Hamilton. Ravens kicked a field goal off of that to make it 13-5. Then the Niners were able to get a touchdown. Christian McCaffrey, 39-yard run, and then he got a touchdown from nine yards out on that. Um, So, yeah, so that made it 13-12. And then the Ravens went 11 plays, 64 yards uh, to kick a field goal. Um, so that made it 16 to 12. Justin Tucker from 28 yards out, and uh, yeah, so that was uh, that was the end of the first half. Then we go to the second half. Niners punted. Ravens scored another touchdown. Lamar Jackson connected with Nelson Aguilar for a, a six-yard touchdown. And that was set up by a uh, 
Gus Edwards' 39-yard reception, um, which was a short pass, of course. Uh, and you know, well, and it was a great play by Lamar too, scrambling and getting out of it and finding Gus Edwards. Um, and he had a couple of those last night. Um, then the Niners, another interception. That was to Patrick Queen. Um, some of these were deflected um, up in the air, and uh, the Ravens were able to pick it off. And then the Ravens turned that into a touchdown. Lamar connected with Zay Flowers, so that made it 30-12. to Niners punted. Ravens kicked another field goal. We go to the fourth quarter. Ravens punted. Niners went 12 plays, 90 yards down the field. And, uh, yeah, Brock Purdy actually had to leave the game. Um, he got hurt in this game. So Sam Darnold came in, uh, and he connected with Ronnie Bell for a 12-yard touchdown. Ravens punted another interception um, in the game. Uh, Darnold got picked off. I was trying to hit Kittle. And, yeah, the Ravens ended up winning the game. Um, yeah, it just... Uh, not a not a great show showing by the uh, by the Niners. Um, Brock Purdy, his numbers on the day: eighteen of thirty-two, two hundred fifty-five yards, no touchdowns, four interceptions. Sam Darnold came in, had eighty-one yards passing, a touchdown and a pick. Christian McCaffrey again, another great game: fourteen carries for one hundred three yards and a touchdown. Uh, Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle had good games: seven receptions for one hundred twenty-six yards for Kittle, uh, six receptions for one hundred thirteen yards for Ayuk. Debo Samuel had four for forty-seven. McCaffrey had 6 for 28. Ronnie Bell had the 1 for 12 uh, with a touchdown. And then for the Ravens, uh, Lamar Jackson, 23 of 35, 252 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Ravens ran the ball for 102 yards in total. Lamar was the leading rusher. Uh, he had that 30-yard scramble, which was just a great play by him. And that's just that's what makes him – that's what kind of separates him from some of the other quarterbacks is his ability to scramble like he does. Um, so – yeah, and then you had Gus Edwards, 31 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Zay Flowers was their leading receiver, 9 for 72 and a touchdown. And Isaiah Likely had 3 for 56. Gus Edwards, uh, 1 for 39. Um, and, yeah, the Ravens had picks in this game. Of course, four picks. Um, you know, you had Kyle Hamilton. Well, actually, no, five picks in the game. Brock Purdy had four. Um, Kyle Hamilton had two. Uh, Marcus Williams had one. Patrick Qu Queen won. And Marlon Humphrey won as well and yeah i mean this was this was a great performance by the ravens again in the be in the very beginning it didn't look good but they pretty much dominated the game um you know their defense you know forcing brock purdy into four interceptions um you know they just play they played a really solid game and lamar jackson yeah he's a part of that mvp conversation this is i mean this is again this is that year where it's really there's no like, clear-cut MVP. Well, still think it should be Christian McCaffrey. Um, I, I think, you know, especially with Tyreek Hill missing a game, although he was able to come back um, and uh, make some plays on Sunday against the Cowboys. But, um, yeah, I mean, this this should be Christian McCaffrey's award. But Lamar Jackson is definitely up there. And Brock Purdy, he plummeted after last night. And now all the Brock Purdy... You know, haters have come out, and they're saying, you know, he's a system QB. You even have Cam Newton tweeting something, um, you know, with Purdy throwing the four picks. So, it, you know, yeah, it's not a good performance by him. But, again, I mean, I think that has more so to do with what the Ravens were able to do last night. And they put, you know, the NFL on notice with that. that they dominated the Niners, and this was on the road. Um, not an easy place to play, and... They got the job done, and you got to give them credit. And this was the game, which was arguably the two best teams in the NFL. Now, the Niners, they were looked at as, you know, the, the top team. Ravens were, like, number two. But after that win, Ravens kind of have that blueprint. They have the defense, and they showed it last night. And the other thing, too, is, and I've been saying this, you know, for weeks now, is, you know, these last couple of seasons, Lamar Jackson has been hurt at this point in the year, and that's kind of hurt the Ravens' season. But now, he's the only QB healthy from that division. So, um, and he's playing really well, and it helps that he finally has some weapons to work with. I know the running back situation isn't the best, but Gus Edwards did his job last night. Um, you know, I mean, you have Keaton Mitchell tearing his ACL, you know, Dobbins earlier in the year tearing his Achilles. But you know what? You got Lamar Jackson. 
Um, like I said, Gus Edwards and Justice Hill, I mean, they can get the job done. Uh, they're not elite running backs by any means, but you know what? They're serviceable. And then, of course, you know, you have, I mean, Mark, listen, Mark Andrews has been hurt, but you got Isaiah Likely stepping up the young tight end. You got Zay Flowers, who's been great, you know, in his rookie season. Um, although I wish he did good, you know, last week when I needed him, but that doesn't matter at this point. Um, you know, Odell Beckham Jr. has been decent. So, you know, you got weapons to throw to, and that's something that the Ravens kind of lacked. And Nelson Aguilar also catching a touchdown last night. Um, the, the Ravens looked really good, and you know what? They they could be the best team in the NFL now uh, with that win. Um, because, I mean, they, like I said, they might have the... Uh, they might have the blueprint. Um, I mean, they did have the blueprint to beat the Niners last night. So, um, But I just want to bring up my fantasy matchup briefly. So I was in the playoffs in, I would, in two leagues. I was still alive. And uh, I lost in both of them. Now, one of them I lost by 20. Um, if we would have started George Pickens, we would have won. But, again, he hasn't been great. But, of course, he goes off. You know, Mason Rudolph at quarterback. So the other league, so I was up by 48 going into yesterday's games. Well, first I was losing by a lot. And then uh, after, you know, Thursday and Saturday's games. Then I was up after Sunday's games. So going into yesterday, you know, I was like, hey, listen, there's still a lot of pe people left to be played on my friend's side. So hopefully, uh, you know, we're able to pull it out. And, uh, it came down to Debo Samuel last night, and um, I ended up losing by 1.22. I lost uh, 128.8 to 127.58 because of Debo Samuel's final catch. Uh, I think it was on the fourth down play. Yeah, so I'm out of the playoffs. Knocked out. Uh, and in both leagues, so there will be no championship coming home this year, which was very... Uh, and it, it was just annoying because I was like, Debo, just get it over with. And I thought it was going to be on the when Purdy was trying to connect with him in the beginning for the touchdown, and then Kyle Hamilton picked it off. But it, it came down to, like, the final th three minutes in the fourth quarter for me to finally lose. It was like, just get it over with. And But this has happened where, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to lose this game. And then it's just they wait till the very end because they want to give me hope that I'm going to win, and then I end up losing. So, yeah, just another depressing defeat. But, um, yeah, with this game, though, I mean, listen, the Ravens put the NFL on notice, like I said. And I and to me, the only team, well, not the only team, but the Ravens have to beat themselves if they don't make it to the Super Bowl. Because we've seen, you know, in the Browns game, the Colts game, the Steelers, They've had some bad games. And again, every team has. The Niners had another bad game last night against the Ravens. But to me, I mean, the Ravens, I mean, you look at the landscape of the AFC. I, I mean, who's going to beat the Ravens? I don't think, the, not the Chiefs. We'll see what the Dolphins do next week. They already beat the Jags. I, I mean, the Ravens have to beat themselves, I think, if they don't make it to the Super Bowl. But... You know, because they played a clean game, other than the safety. Defense played well. I mean, they are the, they have the best record in the AFC for a reason. So, um, but yeah, so Ravens get the win. Niners, uh, I will rebound, but that was a rough game. So um, they got to figure some stuff out after that. So with that, we're going to take our first break of the show, and then when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about a team that is in trouble. Um, and that is the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs because yesterday, oh boy, that was not a good performance. So stick around and we'll be right back here on the GSMC football podcast. <laughs> 